today we are at the Sheffield Institute for Translational Neuroscience, or CITRAND, to interview Dr. Christopher McDermott. Dr. McDermott is head of the team developing the Sheffield Support Snood, a special support collar for people with head drop. The project is partly funded by the MNDA and the initial study is targeting patients with MND. So, let's see if Dr. McDermott is ready for us. So the design, was it your design, was it the students at Hallam? And how did you come up with, um, with the concept of it being snood rather than a, a collar? Yeah. So really the initial impetus for, for the whole project really was the fact we recognised as healthcare professionals that the current options for people who had head drop um, were not ideal uh, and the best way of knowing that is if you go into someone's house who has head drop you can open their understers cupboard and you'll find four or five different neck collars mm -hmm. and the one place you won't find a neck collar is around the neck because they're just awful and they're awful to wear um, and that's because they were designed for something else they were largely designed for trauma victims so people yes. who have come off a motorbike uh, the ambulance paramedics turn up and they wrap one of these rigid immobile collars around the neck uh, to, to stop them doing any damage to the spine and they do a very good job at, at, for those patients in protecting the spine but for our patients uh, with head drop uh, that isn't what they want they, um, I mean my sense is they, they wanted something that supported them but allowed them to move mm -hmm. uh, but that was you know, just my sense And so I think healthcare professionals recognise the need, we have a a patient um, public patient involvement group who sort of give us sort of their priorities for research uh, and so we were listening to our patient public involvement group who were saying this was an issue my own patients were telling me it was a problem um, and so we went to devices for dignity they were asking whether were there any particular uh, problems uh, that they could help solve and so we went with the problem uh, to Devices for Dignity and, and they thought they could help assemble um, a group of experts who could get together and think how to take this problem forward. So Devices for Dignity um, pulled together various healthcare professionals, physiotherapists, uh, occupational therapists, orthotists, neurologists, specialist nurses, as well as um, patients with motor neuron disease, carers of patients with motor neuron disease, uh, people who have experience of the condition. And we, um, we held some workshops, um, some very provisional workshops um, that were hosted down at the Sheffield Hallam University uh, at their Lab for Living uh, Centre. Right. Um, and those workshops uh, where the first sort of seeds of, of the ideas came out. Uh, the initial um, meetings were about really identifying what the unmet need was, uh, what was the problem with the, the current devices, uh, and trying to, you know, think, well, what might the solution be? Mm. And there was some, you, know, you hear these terrible... Um, Phrases that are bandied about in business of brainstorming and thought showers. So yeah, we, were, we were doing all that. We were yeah. doing all the thought showering and brainstorming. That Idea you, that, cloud. That think, that's it. Yeah. Um, and we came up with some quite uh, groovy ideas. So there was one idea about um, uh, wearing a, a hat, and the hat had lots of helium balloons on, and that, and that would. Pull, pull the head up like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was another idea where um, people wore a magnetic cape over the shoulders and wore a, a sort of band around here that had magnets on of opposing polarity and that yep. would push, I, repel I and push, the, push the head up. Yeah. And then when we, we, we looked into it a little bit and it, it turned out that if you... Um, the magnets would have to have such field strength that it would wipe out all electrical devices in the South Yorkshire region, so that wasn't a go. Mm -hmm. But there were, we were trying to, again, another one of these phrases, think outside the box, yep. um, just to get away from the traditional wrapping something around the neck idea. So we came up with, uh, from those initial meetings, um, 
you know, if, you know, and all those key stakeholders together, and the most important things that there were the sort of sort of patients, individuals affected by most neuron disease were, were involved. We came up with what users needed and what was missing uh, from from what was available currently, what the problems were. Um, and then we we had some further workshops where we began to refine some of the you know the broad brush concepts that we had down to uh, tangible designs and the the designers down at uh, Sheffield Hallam uh, took away it started off with some sort of just drawings of potential solutions and then uh, you know people we'd all comment um, and then they'd go away they'd come back and then they came up with some very basic um, three-dimensional prototypes so I remember the, the first time I saw anything that would go on eventually to be the Sheffield Supports mm. nude. Uh, Heath, one of the designers, brought in these um, hair curling sort of uh, rollers, um, oh, yeah. uh, and they were all in different colours, and they were to to represent the different scaffolds. And he yep. he slotted them into just a piece of material to show that you could place these supports anywhere, and and that was a very early. Um, representation of, of the snood um, and then we went to NIHR, the National Institute for Health Research to, to their eye for eye funding scheme with the idea and we went as a partnership of designers, healthcare professionals, engineers uh, we had some industrial um, collaborators um, patients uh, carers, we went as a, as a group so it was Everyone owned owned the project, and that's I yeah. think reflected in the in the patent. So we have a patent for for, for the Sheffield supports nude, and the sort of inventors named on the patent are, are, are all those different stakeholders, which you know, including um, you know the sort of users that were involved. You know, the whole ethos. I mean, it was a, it was new to me um, this user centered design, and I think. Uh, the team down at Sheffield Hallam University, um, uh, you know, were sort of leaders in this field of user-centered design. Uh, and the, the concept is rather than, you know, designers and, you know, people like myself, a healthcare professional, sitting in a room by themselves, deciding what the problem is and what the solution is, and then forcing it on the patient, yeah. which leads to what we talked about earlier, the... the the device being under the stairs and nowhere right. near the patient. Yep. Uh, so rather than forcing it on, the idea was to design something with the individuals who would need it. So they would be asking for it and wanting it. Um, you know, so this yeah. this idea of you know the the individuals pulling and, and creating the demand for you know the the, the product that's been designed. Uh, so I, I have to again sort of say how impressed I was with the, with the design team that we worked with because I think there are obviously different types of designers and these these are a group of individuals who are experienced in user centered design and so you know there were, I remember some meetings where uh, some of the sort of the, the users were putting together or putting forward some particular ideas so there was, there was one um patient who, who said all I want is to be able to effortlessly turn my head from side to side and I don't mind about looking up and down if I could just turn to see what's going on with ease um, that would be all I would want and then the next time we met the um, the designers and the engineers had, had mocked up this uh, sort of collar which embodied that um, that idea and I called it the R2-D2 model because it was just, you wore it and all you could do was move your head like that just like R2-D2 does yeah. uh, but it, it, it would just glide and it offered that support and carried the head around when the individual whose idea it was wore it I hate it <laughs> uh, but it, the idea was explored yeah. uh, and it was taken seriously to the ex extent that something was developed a wearable prototype was developed uh, and there were there were lots of ideas, so we you know we ended up with the, what we're calling the Sheffield Support Snood, but there were lots of other ideas that were explored, prototyped, worn, 
feedback was taken on them. Some of them were developed to a very high level. Mm. Um, some of them then hit the, you know, hit the dust. They didn't go anywhere yeah. else. It, from some of them, ideas were taken and incorporated into, you know, the, the final design of the, the Sheffield supports. Do you think that industry is a bit closed-minded because, well, at any given time, there's only really five thousand M and D patients. Um, even though it would hugely benefit so many more as well, do you think that is industry a bit closed-minded to this idea? So I think industry, you know, there are commercial realities, um, and you know there needs to be um, a market. There mm -hmm. needs to be, a, you know, a profit uh, for you know for any company that that takes this on. And I think part of um, sort of my role as one of the leaders within this project is to work with um, sort of other members of the team we have people whose expertise is, is commercialization is, is to work with them to make a viable commercial case and, and put it to um, you know two companies and, and and we're doing that and you know I think um, you know, motor neuron disease is 5,000 people in, in the UK at any one time. You know, it's, it's a sad um, that, that that population unfortunately does turn over, mm. so it's, it, it isn't the same 5,000. Um, and then there's also the worldwide, it, 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 you know, the, there is a lot more people worldwide yes, affected yeah. with motor neuron disease. And this is a colour, I think, that has, although we've sort of my drive has been to try and improve um, quality of life and, and, and help people with motor neuron disease get the most out of what they can do and that was what was behind me wanting to, mm. to get involved with this project but um, there are other conditions uh, which cause head weakness uh, so the, the muscular dystrophy is a, a good example um, and then there, as well as supporting people with weak necks. Uh, I also think there's a, a larger market within the sort of people with musculoskeletal types, ache, aches and pains, um, you know, sort of supporting people uh, who've had a strain just to rest the, the neck mm -hmm. uh, after, in, after a, you know, a, an injury. Uh, I think there is something, uh, and the market for that uh, it is, is huge. So yes. I think we, we have to think not just rigidly about motor neuron disease, yeah. uh, but we have to look at the wider sort of potential market. Um, and you know, we're working with our commercialization people mm -hmm. to, to put all that together. It certainly helps that we've we have the patent um, granted here in the UK, uh, and we are um, we're, we're, the patent process is, is underway in Europe and the States. So we're, we're going to. Uh, protect it, and that is part of making the sort of license um, attractive to uh, right. a commercial company. Yeah. So it's it's relatively early days. The the actual invention only occurred sort of a, a year or so ago. Um, we're going through this more extended evaluation phase now, which I think is important to show to any interested commercial partners that this isn't just a, a Sheffield thing, and it's it's. The only people interested in it are people who've come across the team here in Sheffield. Yeah. So it's now being uh, uh, provided to patients in 10, 10 to 15 sites around the UK, and uh, it, it, it's also been provided to individuals in Dublin now. So we're showing that it isn't just a, a, a you know a Sheffield thing; that that, that is real benefit uh, and interest uh, in this product. How? long ago did you come to the conclusion that this was a need that needed to be met? What's been your time frame on this? Um, uh, so I, I think you don't have to be caring for patients with motor neuron disease for long to realise that um, neck weakness and the consequent head drop is a, is a real problem. So I, I, you know, I've been looking after patients with motor neuron disease since the late 90s so I would imagine not long after that I realised it was a problem right. um, 
I don't think I'd have, be, I've been in a position to do much about it though, until right. uh, the last sort of five years or so. I, I think the the first time we we really sat down and said we we must do something about this probably was around yeah 2010 2009 2010 right. um, and we began to pull together a team of experts who might be able to. You know, create a solution, and then we began to go to the funding bodies, and we we were initially unsuccessful um, uh, with the MRC, and then uh, with the it, MRC is the, the Medical Research Council, right. uh, and and also the NIHR, National Institute for Health Research, initially uh, declined us, and what was quite frustrating was they sort of could see there was a need, an unmet need, but they almost wanted us to tell them what the invention was before we'd invented it. Yes. So the, these funding streams were it's helping you invent something, but they want to de-risk to such, the ex- to yes. such an extent that we're really you've already invented it. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's not quite as extreme as that, but that, that's what it felt like a little bit. And, and so devices for dignity uh, were really key in... Uh, pump priming us to be able to do those initial workshops to get a real sense of the unmet need to begin to have some early ideas of of what we might develop yep. uh, and the processes we would use and 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 that was key in us able to receive the funding from uh, NIHR. One of the questions that was posed to me when I found out that I was going to be able to talk to you. On social media, I got bombarded with questions about this. It's a very, very popular project. Um, is there any future in 3D printing any of this product as a way of speeding up the process or bringing down the cost? So co- cost itself isn't high. Um, I suppose one of the... The advantages of of 3D printing um, is the ability to make things a bit more bespoke mm-hmm. um, because you can sort of scan and then um, make a more bespoke version. That was the other question that came up, yeah. I would hope that with the intelligence gathering that's going on now, um, within, you know, three sizes, possibly four sizes, we will have the population covered. Because right. a lot of um, intelligence has gone into each of the panels uh, within the, the scaffold, the snood itself, it's the way that it fits and sits, mm-hmm. uh, and it can accommodate, you know, a, a range of sizes, yep. uh, sizes of necks. So a, a small can do, you know, various parameters. A medium covers another set of parameters. A large will, and and then you may need. Was perhaps some one or two other tweaks, but I think I would hope that the range that we eventually end up with will cover most necks and the need for that sort of bespoke aspect that scanning and 3D printing would provide would be necessary. Um, with regards, just as a a production process, so not the bespoke aspect of it. Um, I mean, at, at the moment, the, the sort of manufacturing costs aren't high. It, it, I, you know, I don't, I, I'm, I couldn't tell you what they are off the, off the top of my head, but that's not uh, a barrier. I, I, I don't. Have you had much feedback from patients or uh, medical professionals outside of your original work group yet? Yes. Um, so. Positive. So we, we took it to the Motor Neuron Disease uh, International Symposium in it, it wasn't Florida, Orlando. Or? It was the one before Orlando. Oh, that would be in Belgium, then, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we were there in Brussels. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it was very positively received by uh, your healthcare professionals that that were there. Um, and I know from talking to um, the people managing the current sort of UK and Ireland wide evaluation 
that it's being well received by the n new participants uh, and that feedback is, is very positive. I am really, really grateful for your time. Thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure to chat with you. That is, um, there'll be lots of people, as I said, I got, um, well, in this last week, I've got 20 questions to ask, all of which you covered. And um, people out there are, um, they're keen for this to appear because I'm sick of looking like a car crash victim. Mm. And I'm guessing that's not the first time you've heard that. Mm. Um, this, that, this one that I'm wearing, the headmaster, is currently the head and shoulders, pardon the pun, above everything else that's out there. And yet the snood is a, a significant leap forward. It's, um, even when it was on with no struts in it, I instantly felt that not just the... Well, I, I felt that the lateral support was there that just isn't there with this. Um, and there are loads of people, as I said, 10 have asked me the question, see if there's any under the, under the, um, the stairs that they can loan out to us. But um, if I know 10 and I'm one person, um, this must be of interest to the entire MND. One one group of people that that have expressed an interest are MS. Um, and again, it's a uh, it's a poor relative to some of the other neurological conditions. But head and neck weakness within MS is it's a significant problem. So. There might only be 5,000 rotating of us, but there's 28,000 MS sufferers in the UK, both remitting and relapsing. So, so um, in the, within the 150 Collars project, the idea um, is, is that so, so it's, it's been generously funded by the Motor Neuron Disease Association and I4I. Mm. Uh, uh, and within the 150 Collars, uh, we've funding to do 100. Uh, motor neuron disease uh, patients, uh, but 50 individuals with other conditions. So we're, we're recruiting people with multiple sclerosis, stroke, muscular dystrophies, people who've got late effects of cancer where the radiotherapy has caused the head uh, to drop. Yeah, sure. um, so w w people with types of Parkinson disease, dystonia type things yeah, where yeah. the head's twisted. and yeah. um, So we're, we're exploring... You know that it's wider utility uh, within whatever the reason is. You can't hold your, your neck up, or your neck is in a funny position. We're, we're exploring it. I'm guessing that even spinal injury is um, it would benefit from. Like so the that. only the only th thing about the spinal injury is that our current um, sort of CE marking approval is it, uh, patients need to have a stable neck, and so people with spinal injury, if it's if it's unstable, um, we wouldn't have approval. Although we have, so we have a team of engineers um, in in Signio, which is one of the institutions within uh, Sheffield University, mm -hmm. and um, we're jointly supervising a PhD student uh, who is looking at actually the mechanics of how the collar works. On, on, a, on a very much more mechanical engineering level yeah. um, and some of her data uh, some of Sylvia's data has shown that the amount the maximum support it can offer uh, in immobilising the neck should you want it to do that is the same as the very rigid uh, trauma collars so if you want to immobilise the neck you can slap on all the support and it'll hold that neck rigid just like um you know those, those collars, the Vista collar, ah, and some of the. Uh, I was thinking about the Vista one. Yeah. Any issues with neck trauma? Trying to put the Vista collar on can often be the most dangerous part. Whereas with the snood, not necessarily the case because it's far more flexible until it's strapped on, so it can be slid under more gently. So, um, although not its target market, it could form. A significant benefit to a completely different group. Yeah, and and that's part of us. The the, the sort of key 
driver for me was that most neuron disease, but we need to be thinking about the wider uses mm. within the sort of spinal injury market, within the sort of the general neck ache, uh, musculoskeletal type thing, um, you know, that, that sort of market, as well as other neurological diseases such as MS, as you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. I'm done now. That's, right. that's me. Um.